Thanks, Andrew. It's a pleasure to be here. Um, it's quite an honor to be mixed in with all such luminaries. Um, I want you to imagine for a second um, you live in Manhattan, like many of you do, and you have a, a new child, a toddler, and they were just diagnosed with a rare disease that's life-threatening. And how you feel and what you do next. Now I want you to imagine that you live in Kansas City and you were just diagnosed with early Alzheimer's. And now I want you to imagine you're living in Toledo and you just failed the first line treatment for lung cancer and you were told you have three to six months to live. Okay, I know you're all depressed, it's miserable. What did you do? The first thing you did was you asked your doctor, what, what could I do? Then you went home, you went to Google, and you tried to figure it out yourself. So now I want you to imagine you're a scientist in a lab like myself, and you just discovered a cure for that rare disease, or you're a biotech or health tech company, and you have a device that can fix Alzheimer's, or you're a big pharma company that has a molecule that can fix lung cancer with a specific mutation. So how do you get those brilliant cures and devices and things to the people that need them? If you live in Toledo and you have lung cancer and the trial or the trialist is in Boston or Manhattan or MD Anderson or UCSF, how do you get together? The patient wants that cure. They want to be part of a trial. If you have that lung cancer, how many of you, if you've already failed treatment, how many would you would want to be in a trial as your last hope? Right, so when you survey people, you sur survey your average person, 90% of people want to participate in clinical trials either for themselves or altruistically to help find new cures. So three years ago, I had never gotten involved in industry trials at all. I'd never, I've done my own trials as a physician scientist, but three years ago, I was asked to help Genentech solve this problem. <clears throat> clinical trials are too slow, too expensive, and not good for patients. And so when we learn what a massive societal problem it is, we decide to all quit our jobs and start a company to solve that problem. And speaking to playing for the long term, it is not easy to disrupt or transform the house of medicine or the house of science all at once. So it was a big, long bet, <clears throat> but luckily people believe in us. So standing on the shoulders of giants, in science, we all stand on the shoulders of giants. Like everything we know is built from somebody else's ideas. And in this endeavor, Science 37, we stand also on the shoulders of Google and Facebook because you all go home and search Google and Facebook. And we stand on the shoulders of Amazon Web Services because everything we do is in the cloud. And we stand on the shoulders of Apple, who built mobile technology, and Android, who built mobile technology that's perfect, seamless, uh, always reliable. Putting all those things together, mobile technology, cloud services, telemedicine, and the shoulders of the people who discover the cures in the first place. We built a company that decentralizes the whole operation. So we, <clears throat> we hired the best scientists from around the country to run clinical trials. We recruited patients from Facebook and Google directly from home. And we built a staff of experienced people in Los Angeles to run these clinical trials and figure out how to put it all together and run clinical trials in a wildly different way. <clears throat> so we built a platform that lets us take care of people at home through mobile devices and through all the ways you currently engage with the rest of the world. So in the last two years, so we're barely over two years old, in the last two years we've run a bunch of trials demonstrating that in a rare disease trial, that operating model recruits patients 30 times faster than the current model. Your average site recruits at a pace of about one patient per site per year. So you can imagine how much money you can save instead of 200 sites, you can just have one site enrolling patients from across the country. We also are in the middle of a trial where <clears throat> in one month, 4,000 patients who had never seen a doctor about their acne signed up to be part of a trial testing the first live bacterial drug to affect the microbiome of the skin from home. So we, the scientists will never meet these patients in person, face to face, but we're delivering a live bacterial drug to their home, assessing their skin from home, keeping track of all the safety, all from one central location. The scientists are all over the country. And last month we just launched an oncology trial across the whole state of California, so you can have any solid tumor, one of any five or six mutations in that tumor, and we will ship the drug to your house, engage your local oncologist, bring a nurse to your house, a centrifuge if we need it, and you can take part in that clinical trial from home without leaving your family or your local doctors. 
So what we hope at Science 37 is that by building this really different operating model of how you do science and medical research in general, it opens up wildly new ways to do the research so you can test digital therapeutics at scale in thousands of people very quickly and very cheaply. If you can bring a drug to market in half the time, you can save potentially billions of dollars. Why does it cost two and a half billion dollars to bring a drug to market? Because it does. The current system is ridiculously complex. It's not because the companies are greedy. That's how much it costs. So by shortening the trial, you can actually save billions of dollars and bring more drugs to market faster, which ultimately is best for the patients. So we hope this transformative operating model using technology to bring experts to patients and connect them will open up wild new ways to do science. So thank you.